Jay Rogers here with Server Side Up. Uh, today we will be talking about how to download and install VMware Player and also get it ready to install any OS that we have. Uh, we actually won't be installing an OS due to time limitations, but we will be getting to the welcome screen and you can follow the instructions in particular to your operating system. We can get started by opening up Google Chrome and uh, go ahead and just do a Google search for VMware Player should be the the first link that we have here um, you can go ahead and press the download button here the latest version that we have to the date of this recording is VMware Player 4.0 go ahead press download uh, you will need a account created with VMware just you can go ahead and register here uh, if you already have one just feel free to log in And once you get logged in, you will be able to, of course, accept the license agreement. Make sure you uncheck this bottom one to free up your inbox. You will be able to download multiple versions uh, for VMware Player, also the older versions as well. Um, the one that you'll probably want is VMware Player 4 for 32 and 64 bit windows. Go ahead, press the download button. And this will go ahead and cue the download button down here. Um, but what I did to save some time for the sake of the recording, I'm going to discard that. I uh, downloaded it already in my download. So I'm going to go ahead and just double click. Yes, we want to install VMware Player. This will bring up the install here. You can uh, leave that check for. I'm going to uncheck this here. We don't need to send those out. Go ahead and place the icons on my desktop and press continue. It should only take a few moments to go ahead and install. And then once the installation is complete, you'll notice that uh, VMware will need to reboot your computer. So go ahead and press the Restart Now button, and then we will continue this once the machine boots back up. Okay, now since we have VMware Player installed on our machine and we have rebooted the computer, we can go ahead and open up Google Chrome and pull up Ubuntu. To.com and go ahead and press the download button once you're there. And uh, they advertise their um, their client a lot. Um, what we want to do is actually scroll down here and get Ubuntu Server. So uh, make sure it says Ubuntu Server. Uh, it should automatically give you the latest stable version. And uh, my machine is 64-bit. So go ahead and press Start Download. Um, my machine uh, to speed up time I already downloaded this so I'm gonna go ahead and cancel it and uh, close out of here but allow that download to finish and remember where you're saving it as well so go ahead and open up VMware player uh, you may have to accept some license agreement at the beginning if it's your first time running uh, the software uh, and then go ahead and click on uh, we want to create a new virtual machine um, you have three options here uh, installer disk uh, we also have the ISO image um, this is saving my ISO file from last time but notice down here it says this operating system will use easy install we're gonna avoid that today we're actually gonna do it the the hard way we don't want anything to be automated we want to go ahead and learn the entire process so go ahead and hit I will install the operating system later we can click on Linux here it knows that I want Ubuntu uh, we're going to name this Ubuntu Server, and this is where it's going to save it on my actual machine. All the, the hard drive contents will be stored in that folder. Um, go ahead and, and accept the default values. 20 gig drive is big enough. Now here's where we want to go ahead and press Customize Hardware. Uh, this, this enterprise level products look like as well when you go to Customize a Virtual Machine. So it's good to get used to on how this whole thing works. So uh, we can go ahead and 512 megs of mem memory is plenty for running Ubuntu. 
Um, we also have this DVD device that we want to configure. Um, right now it's pulling from my actual physical computer and uh, we do not want that. We want it to pull from an ISO image file and make sure this is connect up or this is checked up at the top to connect that power on. So go ahead hit browse and navigate to where you download your Ubuntu server image uh, the ISO file. Um, go ahead and press open. And then uh, for the network adapter um, there's there's three options that you have. So you can create a bridge network which will it will join the existing network that you have right now. So if your computer is on like a 192.168.1.0 network, uh, if it's bridge, it will allow your guest to join that network as well. NAT, what it will do, it will create a uh, network on the host and it will still allow your Ubuntu machine to get out to the internet, uh, but that can cause some issues sometimes if you're trying to uh, set up multiple machines and uh, and have them communicate. And host only is it's just a small network that only the host and the and the actual guest can communicate, but that guest will not be able to get out to the internet. So um, go ahead and hit uh, bridged and um, then press close. Then uh, on here what we can do is just verify that our settings are here. We have yep bridged here and we have our DVD device. Go ahead press finish and now we should be ready to click on play virtual machine now it might come up with some message about uh, being 64-bit and also these tools um, one thing that's important to know about these what VMware tools does is that's a set of drivers that uh, is installed on the guest that VMware player uses to communicate to the OS um, you might get this I'm just gonna go ahead and press remind me later so now what we can see is we can see that VMware is actually booting up and it did boot from the ISO here so it did load up the Ubuntu splash screen or install screen page um, like I said before we won't be going through the install due to time limitations but um, once you have this screen it's pretty much straightforward as any other OS that you have if it's Windows, Linux uh, or Mac OS X so um, if you do have any questions, uh, feel free to contact me. Uh, my Twitter information is here as well as um, if you want to just leave a comment at the bottom of the screen. So um, please feel free to contact me at any time and we'll see you next time.